Hello there. Welcome to the last part of Beginner's Guide to GSAP Animation with Motion Page. Today we'll be talking about creating page events and interactions. Let's start with creating a new timeline. We're going to start with page events. For page event, you have page load and page exit. But for the most part, you'll be using page load. Let's rename this to page event. To create a first page load animation, I'm going to go to the animation selector and activate the selector scanner. I want to select this text. It has a class of motion. I'm pretty sure that's the only text that has that class. And then I'm going to select the, the dot. It has a class of dot. And then I'm going to select this text. It has the class of m-page1. So we're going to animate those three classes. So I'm going to start with the opacity. I'm going to set it to zero and play. Then I'm going to go to translate and set the translate Y to 20. Let's play that out. So we see how that plays out. So let's save the animation and take a look at the front end. So I'm going to click on this button. And as you can see on page load, that text animating. Let's make it more dramatic. Let's make the Y value 50 and then play that to see. Okay and uh, let's save it. I'm going to refresh. So we have a first page event animation. Let's add other items to it. I'm going to add a new animation node and I'm going to select the text here. Uh, that should be the text block 18.6. That should be the only uh, selector for that text because it's, it's an ID. I would also like to select this button but I would like to add a new node for that. So let's go ahead and add a node for that. Let's move this in and let them overlap each other. So I'm going to uh, select that ID. And then for this, I also want to do the same thing. Opacity 0 and translate 50. And I'm going to do the same thing to this. Let's play the animation and see how it looks. Okay, let's save that and let's preview. On page load, we see that animation works as we expect. So that's basically how the page load event works. Let's move on to interactions. To create an interaction, we will need to create a new animation timeline. So let's go ahead and create a new timeline. But instead of creating a new timeline, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this page event timeline and then I'm going to rename it as interactions. The reason I'm duplicating it is because I don't want to go through the extra step of adding all these animation nodes and the animations and setting up the properties because this is exactly the setup that I need. So it saves time to duplicate what you already have. I'm going to play this again. but this is actually not what I want for my interaction. So what I want for the interaction is when I click on these buttons, I want all these to disappear. Uh, since the button will not be part of the animation, I'm going to take away this node. So I'm going to delete that node. So we have the node for the text block and the node for our hero text. And for the hero text, what I want is for it to move to instead of from. So we want it to animate out. So I'm going to change this to two and then I'm going to set the same value. And when we go to the from, I'm going to delete those settings in the from the from tab. And let's see how that works. So you can see our hero text animates out. So we're going to do the same thing to the text block. So I'm going to go to the two tab and then add an opacity of zero and a translate of translate y of 50. I'm going to go to the from and then delete that animation. So we want it to animate to zero and to a translate y of 50. But in this case, I think I would like the text to come first and this comes last. So yeah, we have that. Uh, the animation on the text is uh, a bit slower. 
And that is because how the translate works is that it, it animates 100% of that element's dimension. Since the text here is smaller or shorter, it's going to animate at a, a shorter distance. So I'm going to increase that to 100 so that it animates a longer distance or we could move it to 150. Now we still have our page events selected. We're going to switch that to interaction. And when we switch that to interaction, we have different options here. So we have the option to decide if we want it to be click or hover, but we want click. And another thing here is if you want to prevent the default action of the elements, the elements you're going to click, you have to set this one on. Let's say by default that element uh, was to perform a certain action, but you don't want that to happen when you are running this interaction. So you can set this, turn this on. Here you will have to set the trigger class or the trigger ID. And it's optional because by default, uh, the default is the animation selector. For instance, we have two elements here. What this means is if you don't set a trigger element, the animation selectors will be the trigger element. Let's enable live view. If I click this, you can see that it triggers the animation. The same thing happens if I click on this. So let's turn on the live preview. We want this button to act as a selector. So we're going to select that button as a trigger element. So now when I click on that button, of course, nothing is going to happen because you have to turn on the live view and then that is what is going to happen. So, so let's save this animation and then take a look at the front end. Now our page load animation comes in and then our interaction, you know, happens once we click that trigger element, which is the button. Now, what's the use case of this? So imagine that you, you know, you have a button that leads you to another page and you want the element to animate out before the next page loads. So that would be a very good use case for this. In which case you will have to turn off prevent default because you don't want to prevent the default action of that element, which will be to take you to another page. But this button is not currently linked to any other page. So I'll encourage you to try it out and see how it goes. Leave a comment below and let me know if you were able to create an awesome exit animation for your page element using the interaction. Let's take a look at the additional options for the interactions. There are other options here. You have the second click option, which will by default is set to restart the animation, to reverse the animation. So if I click this, it reverses the animation. You have another option here that restarts the animation. So if you click and then you click again, it restarts. But for the most part, you really don't want to set any of those options. Well, unless you really need to do that. So I'm going to save this. Now take notes. And if I click this, it comes up again, which is not what you want. So I'm going to refresh that. And then I'm going to click this. And uh, you see, I have turned off prevent default. And since the button wasn't linked to any other place, it's of course attempted to go out and Yep, we have that result. So, um, but for our use case, since we are not linking this button to any other place, I'm going to de prevent default action and save and then refresh. And then I'm going to click that and you see the animation happens and clicking the button does not do anything because we've turned off these settings. Let's take a look at another option, which is the hover option. So I'm going to select the hover. But in this case, I am going to do something to that. I'm going to adjust this animation. So I'm going to delete the opacity for that. I'm also going to delete the opacity for this. But what I, I'm going to also delete the, the X uh, translate Y values. And then I'm going to go here. Uh, perhaps I'm just going to delete this text block animation. So we'll focus on this. Then I'm going to go to scale and increase it to because we are on the two tab to 1.1. I'm going to set my selector trigger selector to that button so that when I hover on that button, it scales. As you can see it scales. 
so you can set what happens when the mouse leaves. By default, it's set to reverse the animation, which would be the ideal thing to do in this case. So um, what you can do here is to set the duration for this animation. I'm going to reduce it by half. So it's faster. And you can combine other properties. For instance, I have multiple selectors in one animation. Uh, I could go to the stagger option and set it to 0 0.2, in which case it's going to animate with some delay in between each item. So that's all we're going to cover in this beginner series. If you found this useful, hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss other videos. In the future, I'm going to bring to you more advanced animation tutorials on GSAP with Motion Page. We're going to learn how to create some really cool animations like the type you see on award sites and some really cool website like the Apple website and any site you can think of. So stay tuned and more tutorials coming your way. Have a great day. Bye.